In this video, I am going to give you some tips for staying organized in your coaching business so that you can avoid all these chaos and overwhelming feelings that you have and be more productive. I will show you the planner system that I use for this year and how I stay organized to map up all my business goals and personal lives so that I can truly enjoy the benefit of being my own boss as a solopreneur. If you are a woman coach who's trying to grow and scale your coaching business to a full-time business and you're trying to juggle between life and work, this video is made for you. Hi there, I'm Michelle. If you are new to me, I am a visibility and marketing coach for women coaches where I teach women coaches to use the power of storytelling so that they can get seen, get hurt, and get hired. I'm also an international speaker and author. On this channel, you're going to hear a lot about how I empower heart-centered, introverted, service-based women coaches looking to grow their coaching business with storytelling so that they can turn a passion and love for coaching into a profitable business by increasing their visibility and profitability without sacrificing their uniqueness. I cover topics like branding, storytelling, and marketing with tips and strategies so that you can get more clients and have more time and more freedoms to actually make a bigger impact. If this sounds like you, then be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you will not miss any of the new videos that's coming out every week. Let's get started. First of all, I'd like to congratulate you on taking that first step towards getting organized and making the most out of your coaching business this year. It's a great decision to actually invest in yourself and your business, and I'm here to support you every step of the way. So the first thing that you will want to do is to set some goals in your coaching business in 2023. These could be financial goals, such as increasing your incomes or expanding your client base, or they could be some something that's personal goals, such as improving your time management skills or strengthen the relationship with a potential dream client. So maybe it's a new friend, maybe it's a new networking event that you would like to go. How many of those is something that's reasonable for you? We, as coaches, we talk a lot about setting goals with our client, but when it comes to our business, especially if you're new to the industry, you might feel kind of overwhelmed in terms of, I don't know where to begin. I don't even know what goals I should have. Now, these goals could be something along the line of what would be your financial goal. So you might need to look at your overall numbers in terms of how much you would you like to make, and you need to be realistic. Right now, you may be at a starting point, and so you may not have a consistent flow of client. So what is your realistic financial goal? How much budget do you want to put into investing in your coaching business, such as increasing your income, or maybe eliminating some of the subscription that you no longer need? You also want to look at how do I expand my client base? How many people do I need to reach out to? How many people do I need to talk to? How many strangers I need to meet in order to have this conversation that will potentially lead into a sales conversation to get people to sign up to my uh, service. So all these are important goals to set for your coaching business. Now, on top of that, you also want to have some personal goals, such as when do you want to go on vacation? If you're ever thinking about becoming a solopreneur and actually running your own coaching business, you don't want to be working 24-7 all year round. You want to be able to say, you know what, July would be a perfect time for me to drop everything and I'm just going to take some time and days all for myself on my personal enjoyment. So it's important to set up some personal goal as well as you're thinking about creating your business goal. And these personal goals can also mean that you spending more time investing yourself and improving your skills, such as time management skills or something that it will allow you to strengthen your relationship with your potential dream client. So for me, it looks like 
I would spend maybe a week or two just taking a course that would actually allow me to serve my clients better. And I use my personal time on it, but it doesn't feel like my personal time is being wasted because I'm actually learning and enriching myself so that I can serve my clients better. Now, whatever your goal may be, it is also important to make them very specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. So be sure to smart your goals as a woman coach, you're probably already doing this for your coaching clients. So be sure to use that on yourself. You got to walk the talk in order to accomplish and lead by example. This will also help you to stay focused so that you don't get all these distractions that come up throughout the year. And it can also motivate you throughout the years. Next, you want to kind of uh, break down your goals into smaller actionable tasks. This would be something that is manageable. Maybe you set up a top three that you can keep track. What are those goals that would help you to keep moving forward? And so, for example, if your goal is to increase in your income, then you need to create a task list that include things like, oh, reaching out to potential dream clients, update my website, attending a networking event. All these little tiny tasks is going to help you to get to the fact that you want to increase your income by the end of the year. Now, you may have some goals and tasks that need to be mapped out and put them onto a schedule or calendar, and you can break it down into daily, weekly, monthly schedules, depending on what works for you. Make sure to include your time to work as we talked about, and also time to rest. Self-care in your schedule is really important. And I can share this with you as my personal experience. Sometimes we forget, we sit down in front of the computer, we start working on our website, we start working on our business, and we forget to get up and say, you know what, right now I'm going to clock out and this is the time I'm going to spend with my family. So it's a good idea to set some time aside just for the unexpected tasks or emergency that show up as a solopreneur. Now, to stay organized, you definitely want to have a planner, a calendar, or a project management tool. I'm going to turn my camera to show you what the system that I use. I'm still a very digital person. I'm the kind of person where I cannot stick to one single tool because they all serve me in for different reasons and different purposes. So I still use between digital planning, such as Google Calendar, and now I have switched over to Asana, and I also use use paper planning system. So I will show you what that looked like. So that will give you an idea of how you might want to keep track of your tasks, your deadline, your appointment. And it can be very helpful to just have a visualization of what that looked like for me for the entire year. Here is my, my whole 2023 planner stacks. I know over the year, I've been going from digital planning over to paper planning and then back to digital and back to paper planning. So I just can't decide exactly what I want. If you are someone who's like me, who struggled to really decide on one type of system and just stick to it throughout the year, then drop it into the comment. Let me know how you do it because I certainly struggle with it. I could never find my planner piece and I don't expect myself to find planner piece. But this is the beauty of being a planner addict is that I try out different things. I believe that I have found something that really worked for me. So I've been using Full Focus Planner for the last two years now and I keep switching from the spiral bound to the hard cover bound. I found that the wire bound is actually works better for me because I do like the fact that when I turn it over, I can just lay it out flat like this. And then I can also stick a pen over here and just carry that with me. I do just use the pen and paper just to keep myself organized. I did end up buying these tabs so that I know where things are. So like annual goals, my monthly goals, projects that I'm working on. And here are the daily pages that would take me directly to the day. I try to keep things very minimum. And if there's any notes that I wanted to take or mind mapping, then I use the notes on the side to take notes. 
So this is what it looked like. And on the tab, I also have the weekly review where I go back and do my weekly reflections, how I'm progressing. I'm in love with Full Focus Planner. I like it, the fact that it's simple, it's easy to use, and it has a lot of prompts and it walk you through like how to use the planner. So you can order this Full Focus Planner and it'll just ship it to you quarterly. So it is a quarterly planner and they'll just ship it to you quarterly. But, you know, I just like the flexibility because I changed so much myself. So I like that flexibility of being able to use different system. If I decided, you know, three months in time, I want to try a different quarterly planner so I can always switch. Now, what you're looking at here is something I came across last year, which is the Passion Planner. And so I went ahead and jumped into it and I started to love it. Initially, it was very cumbersome for me because there's just too many things in the beginning of the planner and it was just overwhelming for me. And it was in the mid-year where I found this Passion Planner. So it was really hard to get myself into it. But this year... I figured I'm doing a lot of uh, launches for my courses. So I want this to be a launch planner for me so that I can map out my business goal. I can have an overview picture of what I'm trying to do and accomplish throughout the year so that it gives me a more concrete idea of where I'm supposed to be doing throughout the year every quarter. So the full focus planner is more like my daily planner where I map out my, my goals, my tasks, uh, that I need to do in order to accomplish what I'm planning to do for this year in the Passion Planner. So the Passion Planner gave me an overview. And what I love about Passion Planner, it's a vertical hourly. And there is something about vertical hourly where I'm obsessed with the hourly schedule. I'm a very time bound oriented person. So I like the fact that every hours, I know exactly what I'm supposed to be doing every hour. So I like the hourly and all my appointment, my work appointment is all in here. So this is my monthly, I'm very minimal planning. And I would know exactly when my podcast is going to go when my Sunday live training is going to happen. So all these I can have a good overview of what's happening. Now, what's beautiful about it is that you have this whole two page of your passion roadmap and also where you want to be this year. So I love the fact that it's a very visualization type of stuff where you can write down and map it out. Now, I did realize that I am not a goal oriented person. I'm more like a milestone type of person. So I set myself in terms of the milestone that I want to accomplish. My mind works better with projects milestones rather than having goals and and this planner so it actually helps to set up in such a way that I want to have these milestones accomplished so this is the page where I map out all my year what am I doing for the whole entire year so it has a good picture of exactly when I'm going to launch and then when my car is going to open and it also has vacation time. It has a month where I dedicate it. I'm not going to do anything fancy besides just having to get my texts done, get my numbers done. And when I'm going to go on personal vacation and all these are kind of just an overview of what I'm going to do for the year so that when I open up my calendar, I have an idea that this month is going to be very busy for the tax month. So I'm going to dedicate it this month to a tax month. And then uh, let's say I'm doing a launch in July, then I would note myself that during that month, I will not be promoting anybody else's program. I would be just focusing on promoting my coming up offers. But if I'm not in the launch month, then I can help promoting, I can be an affiliate, I can help other people to promote their programs. And, and that's how this map work. I hope this is giving you an idea of how you want to map out your year. So you know exactly where you're going to be, what you're going to be doing. And I would highly recommend that you pick a planner that you love. I finally found a system that works for me. But, you know, let me know in the comment down below which plan are you planning to use for your coaching business. I would love to hear what you're using right now.
finally, please do not be afraid to ask for help. This is something that I have learned as a solopreneur is that a lot of times you're trying to wear so many different hats. And when you try to do so many things all by yourself, it can feel very overwhelmed. And there come to a point where I'm able to invest for a part-time or per diem and just hire someone in a system to actually help me with some of the tasks that I no longer need to do. It could mean that and just creating some social media graphic. These would be the simple tasks that I would no longer need to do. And it's eating away a lot of my time and energy that I have to drop everything else. My assistant can create these type of video for me, but I need to be the only one who's creating my content, but she can help me to like do the backend stuff, clean up the videos and changing into a podcast or, or creating some graphics that I can use. These are the simple tasks that I can delegate to hire someone to do for me. Now, if you are early on your journey, you may not have the budget or the capacity to hire and work with someone. In that case, I would encourage you that you might be able to delegate to maybe an intern or maybe teach your high schoolers how to organize your document for you, right? Put them into folder or clean up your phone. Some of this has the mundane tasks that you have to do. Perhaps teach someone else who know how to do it. So don't be afraid to hire or to actually work with a mentor or a coach, delegate some of the tasks to others. And I love the idea of working with a coach because a lot of time we're trying to figure out things and that's just the time that's wasted. I have one of the clients who actually came back and tell me that having a coach, you help me shorten the amount of time that I would have need to go to Google to try to figure this out. You can just be there, be supportive of pointing to the right direction of where I need to go. And it shortened the amount of time that I wasted trying to figure out things myself. So remember, you don't have to do everything on your own. See if you can hire, if you do have the budget, then hire a part-time or a per diem virtual assistant to help you to create worksheets or tidy up your website. These are something that you can totally do and outsource to somebody. Your job is all in here, right? So your in intellectual property all the content that you're creating, they come directly from you, from up here. And so you are not replaceable. But what are some of the tasks in your life, in your coaching business that may be replaceable? that may be outsourced? I hope these tips will really help you to be able to map out your ear and stay organized in 2023 in your coaching business. These are helpful tips that you can implement today and just stay out of the chaos. And remember, it's completely okay to make mistakes and adjust your plan as you go. So this is just a plan, right? A plan is a plan. It's set in stone so you can always adapt and adjust as you go. It serves as a guidepost so that you have some type of direction to go in 2023. And the most important thing is to stay focus, be consistent, and keep moving forward. And if you need more tips and strategies in building and growing your coaching business, be sure to follow and subscribe to my channel and also check out my podcast, make it visible on iTunes or Spotify. I wish you all the best in your coaching journey and know that your story is meant to be seen, to be heard, and inspire those who need your service. Bye now.